you're watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. James chapter 118 says, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth. He brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creature. So what does that mean? We become recreated. First uh, uh, Corinthians 5, uh, 17 says, if you're in Christ, that means you're born again, in him, then you become a new creation in him. Old things are passed away, behold the new. So something is recreated, not just, not just uh, something new, but a new creation that's never existed before. Hallelujah. So uh, we know that uh, the Bible says that having been begotten again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word of God. That's how we live. Praise the Lord. And so the word of God imparts an eternal life in us when we receive it. And if the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, if we will confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, we confess that he's Lord or make him Lord or ruler over our life. We surrender our life to him. So therefore, uh, now we become new creations in him. And it's done with the word of God in our mouth and in our heart. That's two places the word of God needs to be. And so what's, what, the, what uh, the awesome thing about the Word of God, it not only convicts us of our condition without Christ, uh, it not only helps us understand that we can be uh, recreated through the Word and the, and the work of Christ, but now we can, we can have new minds. Uh, so the Word of God... Uh, will renew our minds. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That means now when we turn our life to God, we begin to serve him. Uh, Paul said, I'm a bond slave or servant. That means I don't. I no longer own and have right to my own life. I belong to Him, not because I have to, but because I want to. And when you know how good God is, you want to be, uh, uh, you know, not just controlled like a robot, but as a free will being. We choose to serve God. We choose, uh, you know, for for our good, not our bad. Amen. So. We are, um, uh, as, as it says, be not conformed to this world or fashion according to the age, one translation says, but be you transformed, that means transfigured by the renewing of your mind, that you may know what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when we get our minds renewed, we start operating in the will of God or purpose of God. Hallelujah. We begin to understand uh, a purpose of life. That we're, we are not just running around like, uh, you know, people that don't know better, uh, blinded like the rest of the world in darkness, ruled by darkness or the prince of darkness. But now we have a purpose of life because God has a plan and purpose for our life. And it all comes by the word of God. So how important is the word? How important is the word of God to you and your life? Well, I'll tell you, it needs to be the most highest important. And we should never have an attitude of diminishing the word in our life. Why? Because if we do, we won't be prepared for the purpose that God has for us. You know, God can only take you as far as what you're prepared for. And the Word prepares us for God's purpose, God's plan, God's will for our life. Amen? So when we get our minds renewed, we begin to think 
right. And if we think right, then our actions will be right. And it will be agreeable to the word, agreeable to God's plan. And uh, because we're, we're honoring his word and we're honoring his precepts and putting it first above everything. And I tell you, it produces the good life. Uh, it's, it, 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 this, is, this is the best thing I can tell somebody. Preach the word, give them the word. It's worth more than all the gold and silver and precious stones or metals and all the earth put together. Amen. I'll tell you, it's, that's what the Bible says. Get wisdom. It's the principal thing. Well, wisdom is found in the word. And wisdom has a way of taking knowledge and understanding and, and, and putting it to everyday work in your life to fulfill the uh, plans of God and desires of God in your life. So we can say this, get wisdom or get the word. It's the principal thing. And, and it prepares you to be used in the plan of God. Uh, uh, God can only take you as far as what you're prepared for. I said that earlier. And, and so if we're not willing to uh, allow the word to take root in our heart, to change our life and renew our mind, then we'll never live the full plan of God. Amen. So uh, uh, the Bible talks about in, in that same book of Romans, I want you to go back there, Romans 10. And uh, we're going to look at uh, verse 11 says, for the, for the scripture says, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. For, uh, it says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same, the same Lord of over all and rich unto all that call upon his name. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord. So uh, the word teaches us how to call on God, how to pray, how to receive, uh, how to progress from faith to faith. Amen. From glory to glory. It teaches us the law of progression. And as we learn the law of progression, we can be more skillful in that and learn that as we begin to progress, we don't stay the same pace. We can have a, a acceleration in our life. Amen. That things happen quicker. They don't take as long. We, we pray and, and uh, we, we employ patience and we stand for it. But there, there are ways to pray and have quicker manifestations. To have faith that produces a quicker manifestation in our life. Amen. So uh, what we're saying here, when we get the word of God and we get our minds renewed to the word of God, amen, it helps us advance quicker, uh, be more successful, have more results, and, and be more productive in life to fulfill the plan of God. Amen. So uh, it's important to know what the word of God produces in our life. We are indwelled by the word. This is what I talked about earlier, uh, about if we let the word abide in us as, as we abide in him, we'll ask what we will, and it shall be done unto us. Amen. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, you can make note of that and look at it later. I'm going to read it to you. It says, let the word of, of Christ dwell in you richly. The Word of God needs to be rich, needs to be full. We need to be full of the Word. Amen. Not just head knowledge, but in our spirit. As we plant and drive that Word deep into our spirit, it will produce things. Amen. It says, let it rule in your, uh, dwell in your, your heart. So the Word of God uh, will dwell in you. Amen. We are indwelled by the Word. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. What does that mean? What does that mean, letting the word dwell in you richly? This is one of the most uh, striking sentences. I mean, uh, uh, things that Paul could say. 
Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Amen. He's saying, just like he said in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. See, I quoted that earlier. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you'll ask what you will. Why? Because you know the will of God. You had your mind renewed by the word of God. And you know there's things that you can ask for based on his word. And the Bible says when we know he's heard us. Well, when we know the word of God, we know when we pray, we know that he's heard us. And if we know he's heard us, we know we receive. Praise God. Some people pray and go, I don't know if God heard me or not. I don't know. I, I, God don't want you in that, in that arena of not knowing. God wants you in the arena of knowing that when you pray, when you, when you speak or decree a thing based on his word, it's going to come to pass. And that's what God is pleased with. He's pleased with that kind of faith, with that kind of assurance, with that kind of decreeing things in your life. Amen. And that comes by knowing the word of God and the word of God dwelling in you richly. See, the word is dwelling in us. Well, we know Christ and the word are one and the same. They're divinely connected. Whatever the name, uh, uh, whatever Jesus can do, his name can do. Why? Because that is connected to his word. Amen. And his word is connected to his name. That's why every demon in hell trembles at that name, meaning they're, they're in anxiety, they're in fear, they're in torment when we use the name of Jesus because we're commanding and decreeing things. Amen. We're publishing things. Uh, uh, we're saying things the devil uh, cannot stand to hear. But what happens is, we are, in essence, resisting the devil. The word resisting means causing one to flee in terror. Satan is running in terror, in fear. Amen. Why? Because he's reaping what he sold. He sows fear all around the world constantly. He's always, he, he, he don't have no power except for the power of suggestion, the power of words of fear. Just like faith is a force and, and we get faith by hearing God's word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. It gets in your spirit, develops faith and faith is what pleases God. Faith is what uh, causes uh, what uh, uh, the realm of, of the, not the natural realm, but the realm of the spirit, the supernatural, to come towards us. We're calling those things that be not as though they were. And it's the realm of the spirit that causes those things to come to pass. Amen. And so the, the indwelling word that dwells within, in us, uh, per, that per, it produces prayers uh, that become more fruitful. It availeth much. It gets more done. Why? Because that kind of faith pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Well, faith comes by the word. Faith produces uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding that dwells in us. Amen. And the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, and when he begins to perform like a force, the forces of life, He'll perform the word every time. He knows the word inside and out. He'll teach us, bring revelation and insight, enlightenment from the word of God. And we'll speak it by faith, insurance, knowing that God's heard us. And then the Holy Spirit performs it. Our job is to, is to feed on the word, build our faith. Amen. And then watch and, and see what God does. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I pray you've been encouraged with this.